Shout out to Chris and all of the organizers for today. A special, special shout out to uh, Carolyn and all of CNA, the nurses. Uh, the nurses, yes, where, where'd Carolyn go? You know, the California nurses were the very first organization to stand behind this campaign when we came out, and they have been standing by my side uh, from day one. And I want to thank the nurses for always being that organization that is willing to step out and speak up for what is right, even if it is not what is politically uh, correct at that moment. So I want, I want to thank you and the nurses for, uh, for all of your support that you have uh, uh, given me thus far. Thank you so much. Um, I want to also say that one of the, the most important things that we have to make sure happens uh, this year or next year is to make sure that SB 562 becomes a reality. Single payer Medicare for all must happen. You know, we were in Altadena uh, just a little while ago. We're just coming from there. And uh, someone was interviewing me about the race. And something she, she asked me, a question she asked me, really, really resonated with me. And I want to I share that with you all. She said, what do you say to the people who are feeling like these are really, really dark times right now? That we're in a really, really dark moment right now. That it feels like a death almost right now. And I said, I, I want to share with you all something that I heard a little while ago, which is, to remember and have faith that it is always darkest before dawn, yeah. right? right? And so to consider this moment of darkness that we're in right now, not as that of the darkness of the tomb, but rather the darkness of the womb, and that we are on the verge of a rebirth of the Democratic Party here in California. We are on the verge of a rebirth of a party that is getting back to basics, a party that believes in the people and that is fighting for the people. And so um, a lot of you um, are just learning about this campaign and are just hearing about you know, my candidacy, uh, but I want to share with you all that we've actually been running for about 19 months, yeah. been running for a really long time. And I made the decision to run for chair for a very simple reason. Uh, I grew up as a military kid, which meant I traveled all around my entire life. But Tennessee was always home base for me. We would always come back to Tennessee for vacations and holidays. And I grew up with an old school Southern Baptist grandma who was the matriarch of our family. And I grew up with a grandma who taught me at a very early age what it meant to be a Democrat. And my grandma told me that Democrats are the ones who care about poor people. She said Democrats are the ones who are in the soup kitchens making sure that the hungry are fed. And Democrats are the ones who do the coat drives in the wintertime to make sure the kids have warm coats. And Democrats are the ones who will fundraise to make sure that the domestic violence shelter stays open. And so I grew up with a very firm understanding of what it meant to be a Democrat. One of the takeaways that I came away with from November 8th is that if we really are going to rebuild this party in a bigger, better, bolder way, then we're going to have to be able to facilitate difficult conversations amongst ourselves and tell hard truths. And the hard truth of the matter is that the Democratic Party as an institution and some of our leaders at the highest level have forgotten what it means to be a Democrat. They have lost their way. They have forgotten what our values are. And so I'm running to be the next chair of the California Democratic Party 
not just to bring a new vision to this party. I'm running not just to bring a new perspective. I'm running not just to change the tone, the tenor, and the culture of our politics. But I'm running to be the next chair of the California Democratic Party to redefine what it means to be a Democrat and get this party back to basics. So for those of you who have not signed up to get our emails, make sure you do that. Because last week we sent out a seven point plan that laid out how to get the California Democratic Party back on track by getting this party back to basics. And I don't wanna go through all seven of the steps right now, but I wanna share with you a couple of them that are near and dear to my heart. First and foremost, we have to get back to what this party used to be good at, and that is organizing, organizing, organizing. The way the party currently operates, we pay too much money to high paid mail consultants uh, who design glossy mail and who spend money on media buys. I wanna move this party to a place where we are developing the next generation of community organizers who will organize not just a couple months before an election, but 365 days a year all across the state. We have to get back to that party that is not afraid to roll up their sleeves, to go in the communities, to knock on doors, to have those one-on-one, -on -one, human to human conversations with folks, to talk to them about the value and the relevance this party has in their everyday life. And so I wanna get us back to organizing our local communities around issues that are important to us. Uh, secondly, it's important, especially at this moment in time, when we have elected officials here in California saying things like they said to me a couple weeks ago when I was talking to one of the assembly members, when I was talking to him about this race for chair. Uh, a Democratic elected official up in uh, the Bay Area said to me, you know, we have a super majority in both houses. All of our constitutional officers are Democrats. Our Democratic, we have a Democratic governor. What more work is there to be done? He asked me. Yeah, yeah. And so let us, let us move away from a party that will be self-congratulatory, that says that there is no more work to be done. And instead, let's move to a party that says, you know what? Let me tell you what more work there is to be done. Because down the street in Kern County, they have the worst air quality in the entire nation. Right? Uh, let's talk about the fact that we still, with this supermajority, and oh, by the way, we had one a few years ago, still hasn't passed single payer Medicare for all. Okay? Bravo. Let's talk about the fact that this supermajority will regulate fracking but won't ban fracking. Right? Right? Let's talk about the fact that this supermajority won't even have a conversation around reforming Prop 13 so we can get some more money back into education. Right? Right. So, so until we can have those conversations, until you know, we can talk about the fact that California has the highest uh, rate of homelessness, the highest rate of poverty, until we can talk about those things, until every kid goes to bed with a full stomach, until everybody has a warm bed to sleep in, until everybody has clean air, until we have Medicare for all, there is still much work to be done in the great state of California. And so making sure we are not just investing in our strong blue democratic strongholds, but investing time, energy, money, and resources in our purple counties, in our red counties, and in our rural counties is something that this party must do. Because another little secret that most people don't know is that the majority of elected officials at the local level here in California are Republicans. It's Republicans because they have been playing the long game. They have been planting seeds on school boards and water boards and city councils and boards of supervisors. So we may have a supermajority today, but when we look up in 10 years, guess who's gonna be coming up the, the gut, ready to take over, those Republicans. We have got to get in the business of playing the long game. And then finally, I wanna use the microphone, the platform, the bully pulpit that comes with being the chair of the largest, most powerful, most influential state party in the entire country to hold our Democratic elected officials accountable to us, the people.
And so having a chairwoman who has the courage of her conviction to say, I'm not in this to make friends with our legislators, right? I'm not in this to make sure we're protecting the status quo. I am not in this to be beholden to the special interest. I am in this to be the voice and the conscious of this party and to make sure that we remind our Democratic elected officials that if you come to this party, if you are a Democrat and you get the endorsement and the money and the sweat equity of this party, your number one concern is not to protect your incumbency. Your number one concern is not to protect the status quo. Your number one concern as a Democrat from the great state of California is to represent the people and your constituents. That is your number one concern. And oh, by the way, we need to have some structural reform within the Democratic Party, starting with, okay, starting with getting rid of superdelegates, okay? We are going to democratize the Democratic Party. We are going to move towards getting rid of automatic endorsements for incumbents. We're going to work with partner organizations like the Courage Campaign that puts out a report card and we're going to say, you will come and stand before us and stand on your record and fight for the endorsement, but we're not going to automatically give it to you, right? And so one of the things that um, I'm often asked on the campaign trail is, what is the difference between you and your opponent? And I actually like to reframe that question. Because the truth of the matter is, elections are never about the candidate, ever. Elections are always about the voters. And so this race for who will be the next chair of the California Democratic Party is not about Kimberly Ellis and it's not about my opponent. This race is about the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. It's about all of you in this room. It's about what kind of party we want to rebuild coming out of this. It's about what we want people to think of when they hear the word Democrat. It's about what kind of values and principles we want to stand for. That's what this is about. This is also about vision for the party. And it's about leadership. And what kind of leadership do you want at the top, setting the tone and the direction of this party? And so mine is the kind of leadership that believes in bottom-up grassroots organizing as opposed to top-down machine politics, okay? Mine is the kind of leadership that believes that we should be funding and building this party with low-dollar, small-dollar donors as opposed uh, corporate special interest, you know. Yeah. Mine is the kind of leadership that believes in transparency, not backroom deals. Yeah. Mine is the kind of leadership that believes that we should be sharing power in order to empower, not collapsing and consolidating power in the hands of a few. And so I want to share with you all that we are at an inflection moment in time, an opportunity for us to take a collective pause, to take a long look in the mirror, and to decide where we want to go from here. This is an opportunity for California, which is the sixth largest economy in the world, to do what only California can do, and that is to flex our political, our organizing and our fundraising muscle to redefine what it means to be a Democrat, to push progressive legislation, not just here in California, but throughout the rest of the country. Because everyone knows, here in California, we don't follow the trends, we set the trends. Yeah. As California goes, so goes the nation. Let's show the rest of the nation exactly what it means to be a Democrat. Thank you. I got time for one question, then we gotta go hard. Everybody, uh, come on in, we're gonna get a group shot real quick.
Uh, Kimberly has to be in Irvine in less than an hour, and we don't want her getting a ticket. So come on in. Uh, we can take one question. Who got a, want to have a question? Right here. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you hey. so much. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so much for. Um, Are we going to do a picture? Yeah, behind. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for visiting us and, and answering questions. Um, I just want to ask you. Okay, as you know, there has been, there's an ideological rift in the Democratic Party regarding last year's presidential race. Um, and I really don't want to dredge all that up now because we got to move on. But how would you plan to address that? Um, and I know you wanted to help the first you know, the first woman yeah, in yeah. the White House. Um, how, how do you want to address yeah, yeah. That's this rift? Yeah, yeah. So here's the truth of the matter. Um, our Democratic Party is in many ways not very democratic, okay? And there has been too much uh, behind the scenes wheeling and dealing, too many thumbs being put on the scales, uh, not a leveling of the playing field. And so what we need to do is be able to acknowledge that that has existed, to not try to shy away and pretend like it hasn't, and then to say, we want to fix that and make sure that doesn't happen again. And so what I want to say is this is an opportunity for us to open this party up, and I believe that everybody's voice is important. I want to make sure that we uh, take a collective step back to welcome everybody to the table. This party belongs to all of us, regardless of who you support it. And I want to make sure that we grow this party uh, and we become a party that doesn't just talk about our values, but lives our values. It is more important now than ever before that we understand that um, so many people don't trust this party. They don't believe in this party because we have been talking out of the sides of our necks. We say one thing and we do another. We take money from those same bad actors that give to the Republican Party. And so we have to be able to say that, to admit that, to call that out, and then to start doing business differently. And so this is a reform campaign. This is about systems change. It's about changing the way we do the system. And that starts with being, being courageous enough to admit our faults and where we fell down, and then trying to rebuild after that. And so what I want to say is this party belongs to all of us. Right. This party belongs to all of us. And I'm going to make sure that every voice is represented in this party. Yeah. Hey, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kimberly. Now get on that freeway. Yes. <laughs> Can we do a picture? Do Thank you so much for being so honest and so sincere. Yeah. And you won a lot of hearts. By saying that. Thank you. So I guess everyone, if you're yeah. taking pictures, will you please send them to Kimberly's website so we can share them with everyone? We're doing a picture? Short people. Real quick. Short people. <laughs> Come over here. I think I call. Yes. Watch me here. I can't go down. Oh, God. I got nobody. Short person here. One, Go Kimberly! Go Kimberly! Kimberly, five six two. You're in the five six two. Yeah. Three. Kimberly. 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 One more. Someone call the highway patrol. Open the freeway. Medicare for all. Medicare. For all. Can I ask you one question before you do? Uh, what what gives you hope and aspiration to what you do? Right here? Yes, what, right what here. Me, just, in case you need one. That's fine. Oh. No, just leave it on. Leave it on. Hold on. What, give, what gives you hope and aspiration for running for, for yeah. the uh, California Democratic um, Party? Talking with activists all over the state gives me hope and inspiration. I've visited 40 out of 58 of the counties, go, um, and the desire for, for change is real, and people are ready to plug into a party that they can believe in. And so if we can just give them a party that they can trust and believe in, um, they are ready to work for us. And so that gives me inspiration and hope for this right. party. Thank you. Yeah. You've got to go. When you got yeah. time? got to go.